What is up, everybody? Josh Tapp here again, and welcome back to the Lucky Titan. And today we're here with Art Bell. And this is an interview I've been looking forward to for many weeks now because unfortunately I've had to reschedule on him a couple of times as we've been moving offices. As you all know, life's been chaotic, and that's what life is all about here in the business world. So I want to give Art a little bit of a, an intro here so all of you have an, a clear understanding of why we brought him on. So Art is the guy who started Comedy Central. You know, that little thing that we've probably all heard of, uh, <laughs> that massive network that has become very, very successful um, around comedy. And I wanted to bring Art on because he's very, he's got a very unique take on how to leverage comedy in your marketing. But on top of that, he just wrote a book that I want to have all of you go check out. So we'll touch on that here in a minute. So Art, say what's up to everybody and we'll hop in. What's up, everybody? Super excited to have you here, man. <laughs> it's great. It's great to be here. Really. Thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah, no problem. Well, Art, I want to ask you a question uh, just to kind of kick this off because everybody kind of sits there thinking about being an author for years. Usually it's 10, 20 years. Of, I should probably write a book. I should probably write a book. So what was that pivotal moment when, when you decided you were ready to write your book? Um, it was actually after I had written a lot of the book because I didn't start out to write a book. I started out to tell some of the stories that um, about me, about my childhood, about how I grew up. And one day I wrote a story about something that happened at Comedy Central. And I was in a writing group at that point. And the writing group kind of like came out of their stupor and said, wow, that's interesting. Why don't you write more stuff about Comedy Central? We didn't know you did that. So I said, okay. So I started writing more stories about that. And suddenly I realized uh, I had a book, it, you know, in this because it was, it was really one of my great adventures in business. And uh, so I continued writing, I realized that there was a beginning, middle and end. And, and I had to think about, you know, the flow of the story and the characters in the story, and who was in and who was out it was really uh, quite challenging. Um, but I enjoyed the entire process. And when I say that, I really mean it. I would read something I read the night before and say, oh, wow, that's good. And, and I'm not that big of a fan of myself usually, but I just enjoyed my, my own writing and that helped. It's always a good feeling when you can read back over something or look at something you've created and you're like, wow, that's pro. <laughs> you did a really good job. Um, well, what I love about your story, Art, we were talking about this in the pre-interview. I really love how you've kind of shifted your career from, from the growth to contribution stage, right? You're shifting to more of the legacy, trying to give back and help the next generation. And that was really indicative of a lot of the people who read your book, right? You're saying a lot of students will actually be reading your book, which is so impactful in my opinion, because getting a college kid to open a, a book is always very difficult. <laughs> but I was, I was thinking about your book and I wanna let everybody know the title because it will make this next question make a lot more sense. So the title of the book is um, Constant Comedy, How I Started Comedy Central and Lost My Sense of Humor. So this is such a cool title first off, I love that art, but uh, what, um, how have you been using comedy in your marketing for the book in particular? <laughs> well, that's interesting. Um, marketing the book, I have not honestly used a lot of comedy in it. I, I did a video, which I thought was very funny. And, and this, this, is, this is my first note to people who want to use comedy in any kind of marketing. You got to be careful because if, if it falls flat, then you're really sunk. And comedy is hard as everybody knows. So I did a video, <laughs> which was kind of like the origin of comedy from the cavemen on. And it was really my daughter asking me, hey, dad, where did comedy come from? And I'd say, well, you know, the cavemen, they were, they were out on the hunt and somebody would, you know, try and get the mammoth and the mammoth would get somebody and they go back and they tell the story. And in order to make people f feel better about it, losing one of the members, they kind of throw some comedy, the funny stuff into the, into the story. So um, and then my daughter would say, oh, that's interesting. And then she'd say, hey, dad, where'd Comedy Central come from? And then I'd say, it's funny because I just wrote a book about that. And then I, you know, go into that whole thing. But <laughs> 
I guess it wasn't really that funny, but I, you know, I, a lot of people <laughs> thought it was funny, but it yeah. didn't really help sell the book. So the other stuff I did, and you know, so much of marketing is digital marketing these days, um, was, uh, and it, it's really just comes down to awareness marketing. Um, it was just getting the, the cover of the book with me. I had a picture of me wide eyed reading the book, which people found funny. Um, but I didn't, I didn't make, you know, a commercial or any kind of really funny uh, ad that I can think of other than that video um, to market the book. Most of my marketing was either awareness marketing in, in, uh, in social media or press. And let me tell you something about press. Press is the greatest thing in the world because PR is free marketing. And whenever I had a job at any of the companies I work with and I was in charge of marketing, I always made sure I was in charge of PR as well because making sure that those messages corresponded, you know, you can't have one message going out in PR and another message going out in marketing. You really wanted to coordinate those messages. And I found it very important. And I ended up loving PR. I didn't know anything about it when I first was in charge of it, but I found out that that's a brilliant way to get your message out. And of course, when you're doing an interview, you can be funny. So that's a place right. that I put some comedy. Well, and I love that. I love to see that because it's, I was talking to a guy and his name's evading me. It was Tom Antion, right? He's very, he's very into using comedy in, in his marketing, but he also said the same thing. He's like, comedy is, is kind of a two-edged sword, right? It can be very, very beneficial to you if it, if it lands, but if it doesn't land, it's going to ruin the piece of content. <laughs> I thought that was so interesting because he's like, you have to test your comedy before you put it into your marketing. And, and you were telling me about a story art that uh, you said you had somebody, I can't remember his name off the top of my head again, but he was, you said it was, you got chewed out for running a marketing campaign for him. Oh yeah. That's in my book. It's a great story. Um, it was the first marketing campaign I did as the head of marketing for Comedy Central. I had previously been head of programming, but my boss I mean, again, for a lot of reasons that are explained, he said, look, we need marketing. You got to take over marketing. So I had to learn marketing. My first campaign was for Bill Maher's show. Bill Maher had a show on Comedy Central called Politically Incorrect. And I knew Bill because he pitched me the show personally. And I thought, okay, he's a tough guy. But, you know, I did know him a little bit. When I put the campaign together, and it was funny. It was funny campaign. It was an outdoor campaign. And it was about politically incorrect stuff. And for example, we had a bus side that said, uh, it pointed to one of the windows and said, does this guy's head look pointy to you? And, you know, just other stuff like that. And the, so we put the campaign together. We thought it was very funny. It was a lot of different stuff. I showed it to the producers. I showed it to programmers. I showed it to everybody in the company with the exception of Bill Maher. Now, why didn't I show it to Bill Maher? Because I knew if I showed it to Bill Maher, Bill Maher would say, you can't run this. This is terrible because that's how Bill Maher was. And I thought, okay, I can either make Bill Maher head of advertising and marketing and, you know, do this 50 times for him and have it never work. Or I can just run the campaign and get things out there. Marketing is like anything else. You got to get it out the door or else it's sitting on your desk. So I ran the campaign. Next day, I get a call from Bill Maher. He says, Art, I saw that campaign. He said, that is the worst marketing campaign I've ever seen for anything. It has nothing to do with my show or what I'm trying to do. And you know what? If I did a bad job, Art, you would, you would have me fired, right? You, you cancel my show. And he said, and so since you did a bad job, I am going to have you fired. And I've already made some calls. And that was the start of an, a remarkable adventure with Bill Maher. Um, and let me just say, without telling the entire story, the campaign was nominated for award for best outdoor campaign that year. And we went to the um, award show and guess who was the host of the award show? Bill Maher. Bill Maher. <laughs> you know, and you just look up and you say, thank you. You know, just, just, <laughs> and I figured if this hadn't actually happened in real life and I wrote it into a, a story or a movie, people would say, <laughs> What are the chances? But that's what happened. And the rest of the evening was hysterical. So anyway, it's all in the book. Yeah, that's one of those 
great stories, what you call the, the redemption stories, right? I mean, it reminds me of uh, um, Iron Man, right? If you've seen Iron Man too. <laughs> I have seen it. It's <laughs> where the politician ends up, uh, the one who hated him ends up having to like pin a medal of honor on him. Hilarious. Big fan of Marvel, obviously. So I want to ask you this, Art, because you know, you really, you kind of hinted at this a few times throughout as well, you know, building multiple different marketing campaigns. Um, and, and as far as, um, your, your PR exposure and everything, a lot of that came down to finding what you call allies and advocates. So could you kind of walk me through what you mean by that and then how you're doing that? Well, when I was first pitching the channel and at first trying to get HBO to understand that, I thought this was a great idea and that they should do it. And here's why I was doing it mostly by myself. But then I realized uh, when I got my boss interested and actually it was my boss's boss, that made a huge difference because that opened doors. I couldn't necessarily open specifically. He got me in to see the chairman of the company. Now, prior to that, I had pitched my idea to the head of programming thinking, okay, if I could sell her, then she would be an advocate. And now you got to remember, I was at the very bottom of the org chart, just above the people, you know, um, who took care of the building. And, and so I did get an interview. I did get an appointment with Bridget, who was the head of programming for HBO. And I said, Bridget, we should really start an all comedy channel. And she said, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. And let me tell you why. And she spent 15 minutes telling me what a terrible idea it was. And you wouldn't believe what she came up with. No comedians would be on the channel because, you know, they don't have time for this. There's too much comedy out there already. Why would HBO risk the reputation? And that was an important one, by the way. If you're ever trying to start a, a business inside another business, it's, the first thing they think about is, hey, if we fail, we're going to look bad. So that makes it hard right off the bat. Anyway, okay, so Bridget is not going to be my ally but my boss's boss found out what i was working on because i went and i started working on it myself figuring i'd you know try and get it financed or go to another company or something i mean i was young and stupid i had no career at that point i figured i could try something so he took me right into the chairman and i pitched the chairman with no presentation by the way no preparation at all he said come on we're just going to go see the chairman and that was michael fuchs and he said, sounds interesting. Let's, let's take a look. And that's how I, I ultimately got this thing started. A lot of people did not want to be allies, but when you find the right ally, you're in good shape. Right. And that's, that's huge. And I love, I love how you jumped rungs on the ladder because what most people don't do, and especially in marketing, I mean, if you're starting a new business, I think it's a lack of confidence to reach out to even the accessible people because we're worried of the failure that we're going to have. But I've even found with our podcast, you know, if I want to interview somebody super successful like you are, I, I can't just go to, um, you know, the next business person. I've got to actually jump through and say, who are the people who directly know art who are way above me? And they actually give you the time of day, especially if you use a podcast, just throwing that out there. But uh, <laughs> I, I love that story. And so, so you, you go and you pitch Michael Fuchs, and, and he ends up accepting the offer. And this is, this is the offer to build Comedy Central. Is that correct? Or to start Comedy Central? Yeah. Now, just let me make it clear. In that first meeting, he said, sounds like a good idea. Let's explore it. So that was a green light to do some more research, get the finances together, um, do a demo tape, work with some of the people in programming, and then do a presentation to top executives. He said, I want to present this, whatever you find out, I want that presented to me and the 20 top executives at HBO, and we'll see where we go from there. I mean, it wasn't like, hey, yeah, let's just do this. I mean, he's not crazy. People are not crazy. You have to do the spade work. Now, I had done a lot of the spade work, I thought, in that I had a financial plan. And I had thought about how the programming would work. And I had all this stuff together. And one of the ways I worked on that, it was I went over it in my head for years um, before I ended up pitching it. And I ended up talking to people about it for years. And the great thing about talking to everybody about it, and I mean, everybody, your friends, your girlfriend, your, you know, uh, people in the business, people out of the business is they always start with, huh, 
you know, that might be hard because dot, 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 or that'll never work because dot, 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 or isn't it going to be expensive because, and then what you do is you're kind of building up your repertoire of responses to objections. Because believe me, it is so much easier to do what Bridget said, which is, okay, let me give you five reasons this will never work, you know? So in order to get people excited about it, you have to have responses to those five reasons. Now, in truth, I know what your viewers are saying, well, Art, why don't you just say to Bridget, okay, here's the thing. Bridget did not give me a chance to say, here's the thing. She just, she just read me the, the, the reasons and said, okay, thanks for coming in. And that was the end of it. Now, remember, she was very high in the org chart and I wasn't going to sit there and argue with her. Um, but when you do get the chance to say, okay, here's why this is going to work. Here's why your objections don't hold water in my, in my estimation. And here's how we're going to do it. That's very, very important. So you have to think of all of that stuff. Yeah. And I love that point. And, and what came to mind was, you know, even though Bridget, you know, is, is at a higher point in your bit in, in the org chart, as you said, she, the reason why she would give you those excuses, because she doesn't have confidence in pitching your opinion to her boss, right? Because she has to be, she has to be so sold on it that she knows they're going to say yes, or she's not even going to put her neck out for you. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting you say that. I'm going to tell you something that is in the book, but I've thought about a lot since I read the book, which is if you're starting something inside a company, you need buy-in from the company, from everybody in the company, because if you don't have it, you got problems. And that's one of the big obstacles to starting things in the company. So let's go to that, that meeting where I had to present the whole thing with the finances and the demo tape and the whole plan to 30, 20 or 30 top executives. Michael was sitting right in front of me. I did the presentation. Michael said, okay, sounds good. And then he turned to one of the other executives and he said, hey, Larry, what do you think of this idea? And he looked him right in the eye. Larry said, hey, sounds good to me, Michael. I think it sounds great. And he went around the room and he asked everyone in the room, what do you think of this idea? And everyone, including Bridget, who famously said, I thought, Michael, I think it's a fabulous idea. And <laughs> that made me laugh. But the reason he did that is because he was not going to brook any, you know, after conversations about, hey, I thought this thing was stupid from the get go. He wanted everybody on record to be saying, I like the idea and therefore I am going to support it because you need everybody in the company's help to get these things done inside a company. Well, and it's proof that it was a good company because so for my MBA program, we were reading a book by Jack Welch, right? And it was, um, what's the book? Winning is his book, Winning. He talks about that, right? Getting all the brains in the game and, and leveraging everybody's brain. But what was interesting is he's talking about it as a mid-level manager, not as the CEO of the company. And, and that's, ex I mean, you're explaining exactly what he did, right? It's, it's not just getting the people above you, it's getting the people below you and beside you and everything. To, and and you know what's interesting? Michael was a very powerful man. As a right. matter of fact, two weeks before I went in to see him, he had been um, called the most powerful man in Hollywood by the New York Times Magazine. Wow. That's pretty big. So he didn't need to do what he did. And I was kind of puzzled, but because he could have just said, hey, look, you're going to do it and you're going to like it. But he realized he, you know, even at the top of the company, he had to make sure that he had that company behind him. Yeah, it's a really cool management strategy. So I want to ask you this, Art, because we are coming up to the end of the interview here. First off, where can people get access to your book? Where do we find it? Well, in the usual places, bookstores, but also Amazon uh, is a good place to find it. And um, you can learn more more about me and the book and also get links to where to buy the book at artbellwriter.com. That's my website. Love it. And it's a good website. I mean, I think uh, I got some other writing that I've done there. I do an interview with myself, which is uh, very funny. I, uh, people seem to think it's very funny. And um, <laughs> it's okay. You can say it's hard, to, it's hard to say. Yeah, I did this funny interview with myself. But, hey, no, but it, if it, you and your mom think it's funny, it's funny. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's a good place to go. And of course, I'm on social media. People yeah, can love contact that. me through that. Well, and on top of that, you, you started a podcast uh, with Vinny, right? Yeah, that was interesting. Um, I'm doing a podcast with uh, Vinny Favalli. It's called Constant Comedy. 
with Art Bell and Vinny Favalli. And we decided to do the podcast. It was actually Vinny pushing for it. He called me up and he said, Art, April is the 30th anniversary of Comedy Central. And I'm not hearing word one about it. We got to make some noise here. We got to celebrate this thing. So we started the podcast and we brought in people to begin with who were there at the very beginning with us um, and talked to them about the brilliant careers they had. I mean, one guy went on to become... Um, you know, head writer for Saturday Night Live. Somebody went on to become head of Paramount. Somebody went on to become head of Fox Television. I mean, these are people who had their first jobs when we were all kids there in right. this explosion of creativity and went on to be, you know, really big part of the industry. Which is so awesome. So everybody, make sure you go check that out. So all of it's really under the Constant Comedy name, but I wanted to just remind everybody the name of the book. So it's first off, it's Constant Comedy, how I started Comedy Central and lost my sense of humor. And then the podcast is also called Constant Comedy. So make sure you go check out one or both of those things. Go support art in this, go buy the book. It's going to be an awesome book. It will be something that you will be able to apply directly into your business. And I will mention also that, uh, excuse me, Please do. I am doing the audio book and I am reading it myself. So that should be out in, uh, in a few weeks. Watch awesome. So by the time this episode's live, it's probably out. So make sure you guys go get that audio book because we know that's like how you like to consume your content. So Art, um, just one final question for you. Just wrap this interview up. If you could give us one final parting piece of guidance, what would that be? Well, I guess it's under the heading of be bold and take chances. So, as so many of us everybody I meet has great ideas in business about the company they're working for or the company they're trying to start, but sometimes they hang back and they don't, they don't speak up and they're not bold. Look, failure is a part of what happens in business and in the world. You have to be prepared to, to fail, but you got to give yourself a chance. And the only way to give yourself a chance is to speak up, be bold, take the chances and, you know, Hope for big things. 